my initial contact was with Jim Carr, but this is uh, Steve Lowe uh, with the same firm. Um, I believe Steve's uh, intimately aware of uh, you know, the water quality results that um, the landfill uh, study uh, obtained for us. Uh, just as background, uh, we are required under our operational permit for the closed landfill to um, seek professional help to Annually, we do a, um, there's two reports. There's uh, this groundwater report, but there's also a landfill inspection report. Uh, part of the groundwater report also uh, requires us to notify certain individuals, mainly two people in Boston with the EPA and one specific resident, uh, the Levitts, and uh, we, we do that. And uh, I sign off that that's been done. I always send them back the copies of the letters to show uh, that it's been done. and. I did bring six or seven extra copies. But the whole reason for being here tonight is um, new on the horizon or the agenda has been discussion about PFOAs. And in the past, there's been questions about, you know, arsenic levels, are they natural, are they, you know, influenced by the, the landfill, things of that nature. And that's the reason why we I've invited them to uh, come and hopefully address some of those concerns to the board. With that, um, does the board have any questions? Do we want to open it up to an explanation? Give us sure, a summary, a, a synopsis of, of what you've found? Sure. So um, as a result of the investigations that you've probably heard about over in the Merrimack area associated with the St. Cobain point where they found this class of compounds, PFAS, uh, per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances. It's a mouthful. But uh, <laughs> basically, it's a classification of man-made chemicals that have been developed because of specific um, water resistance and stain repellent um, properties. And they're used in uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, a, a number of consumer products, stain resistance carpets. Um, they use it as uh, an aid in the, in the development of Teflon coated pans. And um, it's in a wide variety of household products, as it turns out, that most people would never con consider. You know, it's floss. Um, but uh, as a result of the findings in, out in uh, Merrimack, the state has basically asked all landfills and any hazardous waste sites to assess the potential for these compounds to be present at these other hazardous waste sites that are regulated by the state. And so, all the landfills across the state that are currently regulated are, have been are in the process of being sampled over the last year and then this coming year. And Hampton was uh, proactive in getting the jump on it at the end of last year. And so we collected a round of samples from the monitoring well network that was there. And there's also uh, a private resident that's downgrading the Levitt well. Um, when we did this sampling, we did find in each of the wells levels of these the PFOA, PFOS, uh, and um, they're variable. Um, they were found in uh, the northern portion, which is upgrading of the landfill relative to groundwater flow. So the groundwater flow goes from roughly um, northeast to southwest across the landfill. And so we have monitoring a well network that includes wells upgrading, cross-grading, and downgrading of the landfill. So the point of, or, or the significance of finding something in the upgrading well means it's, it's implied that it's, up, it's not being affected by the landfill, but it's there nonetheless. Um, having said that, there were some higher levels down gradient, uh, on, on the down gradient side of the landfill. So it may indicate that there is some contribution from the landfill. Um, the state has established uh, an ambient groundwater quality standard um, that's used for comparison. Um, so they have a standard of 70 for the compound PFOA and PFOS, and the two of them combined. And uh, the upgrading well and many of the cross-gradient wells were below that standard. There were two wells on the landfill that were identified that were slightly above it. I think the high was 92 parts per trillion. So that compares to the standard of 70. 
If yeah. I could just interject, it's yeah. all it is summarized under on table 13, which is midway through this report. And if you would like, I mean, I also have a, a, a figure I can hand out that actually has those concentrations posted out, if that would oh, okay. That's be, fine. be helpful. Yep. Just by, so when you're looking at this figure, so MW1 in the upper left-hand corner, that's the up gradient well, and you can see it has a concentration of PFOA of 12, PFOS yeah. of 10, and 10. a total of 22. Then if you go down to the uh, bottom of the page, um, say in the center, MW7, it's just north of the building there. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. got a PFOA concentration of 22, PFOS of 70, and a total of 92. So, you know, that, so that's slightly above the standard of 70. And then you can see the, we have the um, Levitt well, which is just further to the bottom of the page there. Mm -hmm. It has a concentration of 66. Mm -hmm. And the important, th another important thing to note is that uh, all the landfill wells that we're monitoring, they're in the overburden. They're not in bedrock, whereas the Levitt well is a bedrock well. So oh, okay. it's not a direct comparison, but um, it's, it's relevant. Um, and for the record, the Levitt well is not a, uh, they do not rely on it as a drinking water source. Uh, it's only supposed to be used right. for watering your lawn right. and yeah. uh, cleaning the car. And that's, uh, because they, they, they have and have had uh, aquarium supplied water for a number of years. Are, are you finished? Um, I can go on, but uh, <laughs> okay, well, why don't we open up to questions? Yeah. Because we'll start with, with Regina. Sure. Um, so, on these monitoring wells, this is just for the purpose of monitoring water from the land. Like, none of these are drinking wells or no, going no, into are, any type of right. They're strictly monitoring wells because um, things would leach out of the solid waste that we put in the landfill. And when you close a landfill like this, even though it has a rubber cap to it, a membrane that sheds water off, it is still at times in contact with what we call seasonal groundwater levels. Okay. Um, and as part of the closure plan, these were agreed upon with the state as part of the, the closure plan and were installed in, as part of the closure plan because uh, we ceased using the landfill in 94. So shortly thereafter, it was closed and these wells were drilled. So as far as what, where this water is going, do we? The groundwater? Yeah. So groundwater uh, basically sheds off the top of the landfill uh, to the southwest and south. Mm -hmm. All that, all the water that lands on top of the landfill, uh, mm -hmm. Steve's correct, is collected by uh, cutoff swales, drainage swales. It comes to two areas where you see in the right side of it where it says SW4. Those mm -hmm. words SW4 are actually on uh, a settlement area um, that's vegetated. Uh, so all that water passes under Hard Arts Way, and then um, <coughs> I don't know if you can tell it, uh, there's actually a little pond right there where you enter the, the, the inside gate of the, uh, the public works compound. From there, all that water is discharged out into the marsh area. Um, but a lot of the monitoring well four, six, seven, three, and monitoring well two, those are all uh, ground, it's, it's ground transported water, i.e. it doesn't contact with the surface. Only SW3 on the left side is a, and you can see it's, it, it is in the surface waters. So where it's coming, how it's getting to a surface water sample from a deep sample, I, I, 
I don't know. I'm not a hydrogeologist. Right. The other one that concerned with me was PFOA7, which is a cross culvert under Tide Mill Road. As you can see, even r standard water in a drainage ditch has PFOAs in it. So it goes to the word how ubiquitous it is. Ubiquitous. You know, it's <coughs> like uh, years ago we had to deal with MTBE after the EPA mandated to be put in all fuels. It helped uh, reduce lead in the atmosphere, and what they found is the MTBE got transported worldwide, even up in the Arctic. Um, and now it's, it is ubiquitous chemical in all water supplies. Um, and this is another one. I think everyone in the industry was really surprised how this chem resilient this particular group of chemicals is and how long it actually stays in the in the I mean that yeah, the that's I mean to, to your point that's one of the reasons why they've they've been so uh, widely used in industry because they're so stable but that's also what makes them kind of bad environmentally is mm -hmm. they're very stable and they don't readily degrade right and they're very persistent I first became aware of these years ago when actually watching a TV program on health and they were talking about all these pans, these, especially the ones that are advertised as nonstick pans. And they basically said, if you use nonstick pans, that chemical has gotten into your food and it is now in your bloodstream, mm -hmm. period. Everybody's been exposed to it, period. Now, since then, I'm cooking on a cast iron flat pan um, just for that particular reason. Um, but I'm sure that if my background blood work was done, I'd still have it in my system. Mm. Totally exposed to it. So, um, it's yet, I think, I'll speak for myself and, and probably Steve. I'm not, the final chapter has not been written on this. There's more to come as we gain more data. I do want to express to the public while we are on camera that um, through Fred and Jamie's concerns and, and former selectman Bean, we did pull the trigger on this much earlier than the state in, in a letter to uh, our consultant and say, please expand your sampling criteria, our, our categories to this particular chemical for all of our wells. I can also tell you that the states backed off and said, well, Chris, you really only need to <laughs> grab samples from, let's say, monitor well three and four. I, I, I'd have to go back and look at the actual letter. We continually, with Fred's guidance, have said, no, we're going to test everything we've always tested in the past to protect the residents in this community. So we've, we haven't reduced not only the chemicals that we're looking at, nor the locations, which the state would allow us, but we've elected to take the more conservative approach. And, and with the board's blessing, I believe. Rusty? Oh, you. No. I would just say, so it's safe to say that the town has gone above and beyond what they need to in the same way that Aquarian is doing for us. Correct, now. exactly. All right, thank you very much. Rusty? No, good report. I'm glad we're doing it. I want to continue doing it. We need to stay on top of it. Yes, so. mm -hmm. I agree. Mary Louise? Nothing like humans to poison their planet. Um, I have several questions. When it came time to dispose of the old dump, because that was the dump where everybody went and scrounged for stuff, uh, we on the Board of Selectmen decided that we would have to accelerate our efforts to close the dump, make it a landfill, because the price was going up. At the time this landfill was closed and covered, the feds did not require that you dig out the 32 acres of waste and put a liner underneath. Mm -hmm. So we, in fact, got away with piling up all the debris and covering it over. Um, long run, maybe that wasn't too smart, but then again, it cost us $4.5 million, and it seemed like a sensible way to... Uh, to deal with the issue at the time. In that dump landfill, there was everything. 
uh, including, and I, one nice gentleman who worked for a gas station locally stopped me one day and he said, you, you know, we used to fill up these big barrels with waste from the gas station. Mm -hmm. All the fluids and the leftovers and the oil and the stuff. That's all under there. So I'm sure at least some of it's going to leak. Um, what you have down here in the well, the southern end, because you've got water yep. down there. And all this stuff <coughs> is leaching itself down into the water table because the water's not going to stop. True. The water flow is not going to stop when it gets down there where it shows Levitt well, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that water's going to keep moving. Now, I have na neighbors who are concerned because Little River Road is the first real high ground when you come up from the ocean. But the wells, well 7, which is the old well, and well 22, which has been drilled but is not in use, my neighbors are saying, we're worried about the flow, the direction of the flow from this landfill. Mm -hmm. It, is it, I mean, water's going to go where water goes. Would this potentially, maybe not in a year or two, but potentially be flowing in that direction and potentially causing problems for the existing aquarium wells? Because that's there in the back. The well 22 right. and 7 are there's, down. There's a number of groundwater movements within the town right um, I don't believe I know I haven't looked at it I don't think Steve's looked at it to see if there's any connection or because mm -hmm. that is a concern right but I'm sure we could ask either Aquarian or the state for their groundwater maps bedrock Good idea. maps Good idea. and compare ours to theirs and render an opinion back to the board mm -hmm. at a later date but huh. To, to hypothesize otherwise would be yeah. um, irresponsible for me. I, I appreciate the depth of the report. I will say that <laughs> this is easier for me to yeah. understand, and, and I appreciate that. A picture is worth a thousand words, and I appreciate that. But I have another area to ask you about. Because I have your report from January 11th, 2016. We're sticking with this right now. Because I'm I, with I have the wait, wait, Excuse me. I haven't talked yet on this report, so we're going to stick with this report this, right now. This if is you're relevant. you're changing the sub subject, we're going to stay this on this. This is relevant In to this. In what aspect? This is relevant to this report about potential areas at the landfill that need to be corrected. Uh, people doing the ATVs, all this stuff, people coming in, possibly ripping the, uh, the cover. Uh, has that been addressed, and could that potentially be any um, cause of concern? Uh, has, this, has this report been addressed sufficiently so that I don't have to worry so much about uh, breaches, in the cover of the landfill and anything that would increase the potential for contamination. Well, the, the, what we had noted there was... Um, That's your report, yep. too. Correct. Yep. Uh, it was minor, minor surficial damage and, um, you know, there are steps that, you know, the town has taken. They've uh, repaired some fencing and um, and there, you know, as part of the maintenance of any landfill, whether mm -hmm. it's by ATVs or sometimes it's grubs or sometimes it's just drought, yeah. you know, you do need to periodically um, address topical, surficial yeah. cover issues. But I don't think I'm um, taking a large leap to say that those sort of, what we're talking about, the nature of th this type of damage is not going to uh, materially affect contaminant transport at, from the landfill. Okay. And, and I guess the other thing I would add to your concern, you'd mentioned uh, prior about potential for drums and whatnot, you know, that's, uh, that potential is common to many old landfills. Yeah. But what I can tell you that's very good about the monitoring well network here is that um, 
volatile organics, which would compounds, which would be typical indicators of petroleum type mm -hmm. of contamination, yeah. are not not present. Oh, so, good. so really, from that perspective, the contaminants that we're dealing with is some arsenic, mag manganese, and some of that's naturally occurring. Some of it may be a result of pH changes within the landfill, and. Uh, you know, from a health perspective, I mean, I know that, you know, there are some health associated issues associated with the arsenic issue, but, you know, it, uh, compared to, say, other landfills, you know, you don't have a huge plume coming out of here, the, you know, out of the conventional uh, contaminants. And we, d we did just discover some of the PFAS, mm -hmm. and that'll be, you know, this is our first round, and it will be something that, you know, will have to be monitored and, you know, we don't know if these levels are representative, and that will come out over time. Um, so, it was my understanding when the landfill was closed that the monitoring would have to take place at specified intervals. I don't know if it was annually, but I'm assuming that we have been water quality is twice a year, and I believe gas and and, and, and the gas vents and the the structure of the landfill right. is four times a year. Right. So yes, we that does continue. To address your question, it was in last year's report that they noted uh, extensive ATV access to the to the landfill. I, uh, we we took steps to remedy that. Um, found money within my budget, and basically from SW four all the way down to what would be MW three um, is now there's a six foot high chain link fence. So no one Good. can get into the landfill with a mechanized Good. ATV. All we were told vehicle. if that cover was breached, we'd potentially have to dig the whole thing up, put a right. ground cover under, and then replace well, it. We're not seeing any breaches. Um, okay. the, the ruts that they uh, did talk about are uh, in a line somewhere between monitoring on well one and two, mm -hmm. uh, actually caused by my own staff. Uh, didn't realize it was as the ground was as saturated as it was. Tried to just go from point A to B in a direct path rather than uh, traversing all the way around the landfill. And we went back up and loamed and seeded those and regraded them, um, but they are still evident a little bit. Um, we did have some Queen Anne's lace that we dealt with a year or two ago. We overseeded, reseeded that whole area. Uh, and, and mowed it twice, and the Queen Anne's lace uh, subsided mm -hmm. dramatically. So, um, but uh, ATC has reminded us that, um, yes, I have a gas vent that needs to be repaired, yeah. and uh, the mowing operations banged into one of the, okay. we use a piece of well tile, we cracked it and folded it in. Okay. Um, so those two things will be handled this summer. So you made your employees write 500 times, we will be careful of the landfill? Yes, they. Thank they, you, Chris. They didn't, Thank you. The shortest path is not <laughs> the least uh, resistance. So yeah, we are actively aware, and every year we do take steps to yeah, I maintain that. the landfill. This is a good report. I mean, I read it. It's really good. I mean, and a lot of us are well aware of PFAS and dealing yep. with aquarium with their wells and stuff, and talking oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. So I mean, I'm glad that we've got the monitoring wells and we're staying on top of it, because as this decomposes or as things keep right. going down, mm -hmm. will there be more flow potentially? Could there be? I mean, I'm not asking you to. Yeah. You know, it's the whole, um, you know, source of the PFAS in landfills is kind of new and kind of unknown, and it's going to be unique to each landfill and what was put in it mm -hmm. and yeah. where in the vertical column of the landfill yeah. was it deposited. Mm -hmm. So. It's really hard to predict, you know, uh, with any degree of certainty, you know, what the future trend is. And I think that's, you know, that's the point of the monitoring, so mm -hmm. that you, you, and, you, and are, you keep an eye on it. And currently, if you have those wells there that are high, yep. that water is going into the marsh? Yes, no? Oh, all, sure. all groundwater, yeah. I would think, eventually is making the marsh. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Okay. So, Excuse me, I'm listening to these guys, Mary Louise, if you don't mind. So, and that's getting diluted in the marsh. That's getting 
it's getting looting the marsh that's bothering wildlife being, in the marsh well it's being some of it's being broken down and attenuated some of it's being yeah. absorbed by the plant life some of it uh um, there's a host of things that would go on um, typically mar this type of marsh and all upland wetland marshes are great purifiers of water um, they do for us or for society what in some respects we can't do and um, that's why you know these the grass swales and and in the ones lined with vegetation they do a great job at, at binding up uh, these things um, binding them up and, and breaking them down over time hmm. um, but I I'm nowhere a chemist to tell you how long it takes or, or to what benefit it would take but hydraulically that groundwater model to model that we have and it's verified by the elevations of the wells we compare them to each other is traveling from where you enter hard arts way down to basically the entrance of the, the transfer station and i would presume barring any other geological formation that they continue to flow that way which directly will put them into the marsh how long they take to go through that is well in digging in the marsh it's 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 a whole different biosphere if you will uh you know the, the it's it's like a huge active sponge that is far more biologically active than <coughs> any of the upland areas so i don't but i won't hypothesize any okay. further on what's going on thank you very much for your report okay. really thank appreciate you. it appreciate what you're doing and please keep us informed informed i'm sure everybody wants we have a new bid uh um, ATC Group has been our vendor for the last six years that I've been here. Um, we do have a new bid that we're going to we're required every three years to put it out to bid. Uh, that gets opened, I believe, Thursday afternoon. Um, we'll either be working with ATC or an equally competent um, firm. But uh, this is mandated by the state and the EPA indirectly. We'll continue to do it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, just real quick C Chris bid for what landfill monitoring services okay because anything over fifteen thousand dollars in the combination yeah. of the actual physical work the report writing and the lab analysis puts it okay. over 15 annually so we will uh, continue to uh, pursuant to the town's purchasing policies uh, put this out to bid every three years. excellent thank you yeah. thank anybody you. has anything else and if you have any other questions, uh, if they come up later, or if uh, Selectman Griffin has them, uh, mm -hmm. pass them on to the manager. I will pass them on, and we'll definitely get you some answers. We'll do. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for coming in.